Hey guys, so today we're going to uh, just sort of look at how we might construct a um, multi-layered uh, animation sort of landscape. Um, now, the idea here is that I've got um, several different things kind of going on. I've got like a, a searched for a city skyline, I searched for a mountain skyline, and I searched for a bridge um you know just any old bridge here now um uh this is this does not mean that you have to do what i'm doing here you don't have to do this at all uh, um you can do something totally different in fact i encourage you to kind of explore your own creative you know how do you how do you do um but uh this just i, I just want to show you kind of how you'll go from illustrator uh, in which case we have lots of really um, powerful shape building and illustrating tools uh, that we can use uh, to After Effects. So this uh, we'll, we'll start off here and then we'll move on to After Effects in just a second here. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and open up um, Illustrator and we have limited experience with Illustrator so I'll just uh, kind of take you step by step. Uh, now when you open up Illustrator, um, I don't think you'll have much under recent but you've got several options when it comes to choosing um, how you want uh, your your canvas, shall we say, to be set up. The way they, the, the word they use is artboard. Mobile obviously has sort of vertically um, oriented sort of canvases that you can use for phones. That's certainly a thing you could do if you wanted to make an animation that fit well on your phone, like a mobile game, something like that. Um, web uh, usually just refers to designing websites, and it is sort of a, a varying degrees of common sort of uh, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, orientations for your websites. Print is what it says. You've got your eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You've got A4 paper, which is popular in Europe, legal paper, et cetera, et cetera, all those things. Film and video um, allow you to kind of uh, see different um, uh, uh, safe margins and, and different things when it comes to you know, popular video formats. And then art and illustration give you even uh, even more sort of a range of, of various uh, different things. And they, and they all have different ways of measuring them. Now in terms of mobile, it's usually pixels. In terms of web, it's pixels. I think print and art are all down to points, which is a sort of a unit of measurement that's a think about Oh gosh, I don't know some 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 order of pixels, uh, and then film and video I think is also is also videos as well or pixels as well. Um, all right, so I'm going to choose uh, instead of doing film and video, I'm going to choose web, and I'm going to choose web large because that's 1920 by 1080 pixels. And the reason why I'm choosing that instead of film and video is because film and video comes in with a totally empty canvas. It it only has the uh, the transparency grid and doesn't give you a really solid border as far as what your um, uh, what, what your what your thing is, and uh, what, what your uh, canvas is, and uh, there's a lot of reasons for that, which we'll probably get into later. But in the meantime, though, let's go over here to our web uh, large 1920 by 1080 pixels. And again, this is up to you if this is what you want to use. Uh, if you want to do an HD video, if you want to do a square one, that's fine too. But uh, I'm going to be sort of constructing this as if I'm making an HD video um, uh, animation here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create that. And um, what uh, you can do with this, I'm just kind of, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over here to view, and if you want to see what I'm looking at, I can go to Window Workspace. I have Essentials, and I'll just go ahead and hit Reset Essentials. So we're all looking at the same thing here, um, and I'm gonna go View. Uh, fit all in window so I can see what I'm working with here. Uh, now, our, our, the uh, the sort of uh, requirements for this are that we have three layers uh, upon which nothing will move, uh, but your animated objects need to interact between the different layers. Um, so you need to have them separate both um, uh, in here and also on your uh, on your uh, After Effects. So um, just a couple of, of, of useful techniques. Um, for instance, if I wanted to start off with the very, very background with my mountains, uh, I can just grab my mountain um, skyline here, and I'll just uh, click on this skyline. I could even just right click on it. If I could get my right click to work here, right click on it, copy it, and then paste it inside here. And from there you can resize um, your objects in a varying, varying different ways here. Uh, sometimes it doesn't quite work out because usually you have it like as big as you, but if you just hold, right click on it and say transform, and then you say just uh, scale, you can sort of scale it up to, 
you know, in this case, I'll just scale it like 500 pixels. It should, uh, you should be able just to uh, grab, grab by the corner and sort of resize it. For some reason that sometimes it doesn't work here. Let's see. I wonder if I can use the other one here. Nope, that's fine. All right, it's okay. Um, let me just zoom out a little bit here and I'll just get my move tool. Here we go. Get my move tool here and I can just grab it by the corner and just click and hold down shift to resize it to fit uh, what I'm looking at here. Now, um, uh, the, the easiest tool to use, and for this case, I'm gonna go over here to my layers menu, and I'm just going to hit this little uh, space between the eyeball icon and the little colored uh, strip there, and it's gonna lock that down. I'm gonna make a new layer, and I'm gonna grab my pen tool, and under properties, I'm going to um, uh, take make sure the stroke is set to none, which is this little slash down the middle there, and my fill I'm going to change to some other color. So in this case, I might just choose blue. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through, and the idea with the pen, it's the same thing with the path tool inside your um, uh, After Effects. You click once, and then you click again, but you don't let go. You click and you hold, and you can drag and that will curve your line. And as you curve it, it's going to sort of like start to fill in the gaps with a color. And if you don't want to see that, you know, at first while you design it, you can just take off your, um, uh, take off your fill. You can just go over here to fill and just remove that. And all you'll see is just the line. Uh, we call this line the path, right? And the path is basically just the edge that you're creating. Um, so everything you see in Illustrator has a path. Um, but what I'll do for now is I'll just keep the fill on and I'll keep it that same blue color and, and then what I'll do is I'll just uh, I'll just click once and I'm gonna all zoom in a little bit here just so I can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to click and drag and click and drag and create new points uh, until I can kind of fill up uh, this uh, image here with uh, kind of what we're looking at, uh, the, the, the idea of the mountains. Now, obviously you can see it's sort of filling in the top side. I don't really want that, but as I go through, it'll fill in the rest of this. So I'm gonna speed this up as I create this little mountainscape here. Okay, so as you can see, I've uh, I've taken this little mountainscape and I've created this uh, this just sort of the, the top layer here. There's a couple of spots here there where I kind of uh, um, couldn't quite form it correctly. So what I can do is I can take this tool up here, this little white cursor right there, and I, it's my direct selection tool. I can zoom in some, and it'll actually allow me to sort of adjust not only the position of the uh, anchors themselves, but also manipulate these little these little handlebars there that will allow me to sort of uh, affect how curved they are in between each each one. Um, so for instance, I can kind of pull this up here, I can put this up there and stuff. And as uh, you, you can be as um, exact as you want or as inexact as you want, it's up to you. Um, but the idea is that you want to at least uh, have some semblance of, uh, uh, of you know, being able to tell what it's supposed to be once you're done. So once we kind of back up here, you should be able to kind of see what we're looking at. Um, so in this case, I've got my, uh, my mountains here. They're this sort of blue color. I could even make them gray if I wanted to. I could make them a dark gray. Um, generally speaking, the, the, the further back things are, um, you know, the more vague they get. So if you want to sort of uh, keep, a, keep a certain gradient between the background, in the foreground, uh, that, that's sort of up to you. Um, okay, so with that done, I'm going to take my layers and I'm going to lock this down here and I'm going to make my uh, background layer uh, invisible. So I don't want to mess with this. Um, okay, so I'll go ahead and get my cityscape in here. Let me get my skyline. Here's this, I'll just copy this. Copy image. And I'll paste it inside Illustrator. Oh, I'll make a new layer and then I'll paste and I'll just uh, sort of get my move tool here and I'll just make this as big as the image itself and I might pull this further down a little bit just so it's like kind of away from the mountains that's good that's okay and uh, once again I'll lock this layer down and I'll make a new layer and I'll get my pen tool and I will begin and I'll, I'll choose a different color for my fill with my pen tool selected. I'll choose maybe a, uh, 
So this is mostly gray. I'll, I'll choose maybe a uh, either a lighter gray or even maybe a lighter blue. Depends on what I'm looking for. I'll, I'll just, and once again, I'm going to go through and I'm just going to click. And in this case, I probably don't have to drag much because there's mostly square things. In fact, if you want to hold down shift, that'll allow you to go perfectly uh, horizontally and vertically as you go through. And you can kind of create different, uh, different sort of rectangular shapes as you go through. Once again, I'll speed this up. Okay, so I've got that done. Uh, so now I can kind of see what I'm working with here. I've got my mountains uh, in the background and I've got my city in the foreground. So I've got this sort of like mountainy city. Um, now, obviously, um, a good thing to have would be a sky. So in this case, I don't like, w even though it's white there, I really don't have any sort of sky as it is. Um, but uh, let's just sort of go ahead and um, click down here where we have like, you know, we have our, our different layers. We have our mountains here. We've got our city here, so I want to be below, so somewhere between, uh, under layer two, or whatever layer your mountains are on, or whatever background you might have. You might have a forest, you might have any number of things. Uh, I'll create a sky, and I'll create a sky just by going over to my rectangle tool, and uh, I'll just grab a rectangle, and I might, um, with my rectangle tool selected, get like a light blue, uh, like maybe one of these here, and just sort of create this little rectangle across everything. Um, okay, now, um, I am not very satisfied with my color palette right now. Um, so one way of, of choosing a color palette, obviously, is to go to, uh, you know, a website like color.adobe.com uh, and, um, you know, search for something. Like if I go to explore, I might search for something like, um, hello, I might search something like a minimalist or uh, something like that and I could get like a, a sort of a, a, a muted array of colors that I can work with. Um, I, although I will say I spotted this right here, copy of a cat. That seems kind of cool. I'm gonna, I, mean, I might uh, take a look at some of these colors later on here. Um, but essentially the way you use these uh, is uh, when you can, um, w when you click on edit copy, it'll allow you to kind of uh, pick and choose the different colors that you're looking at, and you can uh, you can adjust, you can transfer those over by doing this. So I go over here to my dot AI, my, my um, Adobe Illustrator here, and I've got my little uh, selection tool. I can select the different things, and then um, oops, I want to make sure I unlock them though. So I'll unlock these two so I can actually select them. Um, so for instance, I click on my sky and I go to my properties, I click on my fill and I go over here to my color mixer and I have this little hashtag down here. Uh, this is the hexadecimal um, setting here. So I might just uh, click on maybe this uh, color here and I'll just double click that, control C, come over here to my fill and then hit that little uh, hexadecimal bit right there and control V. And then I've got my little, um, my little uh, sky is now a different color. And same thing with my mountains. So now I've got this, uh, this little, you, you might not uh, appreciate that. I mean, that's one of those things you can do. Um, but okay, so um, we've got that. Now, as far as the other layers, now think of thinking this, uh, when I, whenever I import this, uh, I'm going to import this in such a way that it's going to be uh, it's going to cut off along the edges of my little composition here. Um, so if I want something that's going to be, say, like longer than the artboard, that's going to extend past, uh, you know, it's going to go in and out. I want it to make sure that it's all inside. So all this sort of stuff right here, we can kind of call that the bleed. Um, I don't, I don't want that. Now, last thing I'll do. So we, now we've got three layers here that don't have any movement. Um, so say, for instance, I, I, I want to add in a few things that do move. Uh, whatever I do that's moving needs to be its own layer. So say, for instance, um, between uh, the, the mountains and the city, uh, maybe I want, say, for instance, a, a, a plane to fly. Um, so I'll find my city layer here. This is my mountains. This is my city up here. I'll make a new layer, and I'm just going to draw a quick plane. So with this done, um, I can just take, you know, these two things here and just sort of select both of them, hold down shift, select them both. And this little pathfinder thing should pop up down here. If you don't see it, you can go to window and find pathfinder, right? It's already open. And you see this little button that says unite. I want to say it's called unite. 
yeah, right. And they become one little thing, and you can sort of shrink this down to the size you want it to be. So I'll shrink it down to like there. And so I'll have that kind of hanging out here. Obviously, plane is not as big as a building, so I could kind of have it hanging out this way. And uh, we can maybe even have it maybe taking off from the city um, at some point. Um, there's that. Oh, sticky keys. No. All right. Uh, maybe between the, um, the the sky and the clouds, I, uh, the sky and the mountains, maybe I want some clouds. So down here below, I'll draw some clouds. And the clouds are very easily drawn. If Um, okay, so I've got um, three things that are moving at this point. Let's build my um, uh, next couple things here. So I'm going to put, say, for instance, a, uh, a sun uh, or maybe even a moon or maybe a sun and a moon. So I've got uh, layer six is my plane. Um, layer seven is my cloud. Layer eight is my cloud. I'm going to name these. I'm going to call this one right here. Let's see if I can't find each one of these things. So, uh, between the sky and the clouds, so the clouds are always going to be in front of the sun. I'll just draw a circle here, and I might draw this circle. Hold down shift to draw this circle with your lips tool, and I'll make this uh, circle here. I'll make this uh, kind of a, uh, a yellowish color, maybe. Not quite so yellow. A pale yellow, as it were. And... Um, uh, that'll be that. That could be a moon or a sun. Up to you, right? World's your oyster. You have that. Maybe have that sort of sitting down here underneath the clouds. So, and maybe you can maybe you can rise or fall. Uh, and then um, lastly, we'll add one more thing here. I'm going to add a bridge, uh, and uh, we'll we'll add a bridge, and we'll add a um, uh, add some sort of uh, uh, vehicles going across the bridge here. So I'll go to um, I'll copy this image. And I'll paste this image and I'll drag this image up to a new oops. Let me just go ahead and control X and then up to the very top, like a new layer, control F, and I'll just make this as big as I can here. I might not make make it as big as the entire document. Okay, so just for the sake of brevity, I'm just gonna stop it with one car. And I'll kind of have it hanging out here. And honestly, um, that's a bit too huge in comparison to the rest of the bridge. So I might just make it a little bit smaller. That's good, okay, a little tiny little car there. Uh, and um, all right, so I'll just pull that down some. Um, now, obviously, you know, scales is, is is important to make your your you know to keep people you know kind of involved in your life. But we we've got a couple of things here that that are that that are happening. We've got uh, three things or really four things that aren't moving, and uh, at this point we have uh, four things that are going to move. Uh, we're going to add some stuff when we come back uh, in in uh, After Effects. Uh, but for now, just save this, and um, you can call it you know animation background. And um, what we'll do is we'll make sure that our layers are all named here. So we'll call this layer bridge and this layer here, call it car. All right, and uh, awesome. So we'll, we'll come back to After Effects in just a second. 